Hello and welcome to day 143 of our Bible in a Year Challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be your host for today. Welcome. We are committed to reading and fellowshipping with God's Word every single day of this year, 2024. Please kindly go ahead right now, subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Arulaba. Let's get started. Let us say a word of prayer. Dear Lord, as we approach your sacred word on this 143rd day of our journey through the Bible, we come with hearts full of anticipation and minds open to learn. Thank you for guiding us this far and for the wisdom and insight we have gained through your scriptures. Lord, as we continue to delve into your word, we ask for your Holy Spirit to be with us, illuminating the texts so that we may understand them deeply. Help us to discern the messages you have for us today, that we may apply them to our lives and be transformed by them. May your word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Encourage us, challenge us, and equip us to be better followers of Christ. Let us not only read the words, but truly live them out in our daily actions and decisions. We are grateful for the nourishment that your word provides to our souls. Bless our reading today and may it enrich our relationship with you and with those around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Day 143, May 23rd, 2024, 365 days Bible reading. Old Testament, 1 Samuel 13, 1 Samuel 14, 1 to 23. New Testament, John 13, 18 to 38. Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 66, verse 13 to 20. Old Testament, NIV version. 1 Samuel 13, 1 to 23. Samuel rebuked Saul. Saul was 30 years old when he became king, and he reigned over Israel 42 years. Saul chose 30,000 men from Israel, 2,000 were with him at Michmash and in the hill country of Bethel, and 1,000 were with Jonathan at Gibeah in Benjamin. The rest of the men he sent back to their homes. Jonathan attacked the Philistine outpost at Geba, and the Philistines heard about it. Then Saul had the trumpet blown throughout the land and said, Let the Hebrews hear. So all Israel heard the news. Saul has attacked the Philistine outpost, and now Israel has become obnoxious to the Philistines. And the people were summoned to join Saul at Gilgal. The Philistines assembled to fight Israel with 3,000 chariots, 6,000 charioteers, and soldiers as numerous as the sand on the seashore. They went up and camped at Michmash, east of Beth Aven. When the Israelites saw that their situation was critical and that their army was hard pressed, they hid in caves and thickets, among the rocks, and in pits and cisterns. Some Hebrews even crossed the Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. Saul remained at Gilgal, and all the troops with him were quaking with fear. He waited seven days, the time set by Samuel, but Samuel did not come to Gilgal. And Saul's men began to scatter, so he said, Bring me the burnt offering and the fellowship offerings. And Saul offered up the burnt offering. Just as he finished making the offering, Samuel arrived and Saul went out to greet him. What have you done? asked Samuel. Saul replied, When I saw that the men were scattering and that you did not come at the set time and that the Philistines were assembling at Michmash, I thought, Now? The Philistines will come down against me at Gilgal, and I have not sought the Lord's favor. So I felt compelled to offer the burnt offering. You have done a foolish thing. 
Samuel said, You have not kept the command the Lord your God gave you. If you had, he would have established your kingdom over Israel for all time. But now your kingdom will not endure. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him ruler of his people because you have not kept the Lord's command. Then Samuel left Gilgal and went up to Gibeah in Benjamin. And so counted the men who were with him, they numbered about 600. Israel, without weapons, Saul and his son Jonathan and the men with them were staying in Gibeah in Benjamin while the Philistines camped at Michmash. Raiding parties went out from the Philistine camp in three detachments. <clears throat> One turned toward Ophrah in the vicinity of Shua, another toward Beth Horon, and a third toward the borderland overlooking the valley of Zeboim facing the wilderness. Not the blacksmith could be found in the whole land of Israel because the Philistines had said otherwise the Hebrews would make swords or spears. So all Israel went down to the Philistines to have their plow points, mattocks, axes, and sickles sharpened. The price was two-thirds of a shekel for sharpening plow points and mattocks, and a third of a shekel for sharpening forks and axes, and for repointing goads. So on the day of the battle, not a soldier with Saul and Jonathan had a sword or spear in his hand. Only Saul and his son Jonathan had them. Jonathan attacks the Philistines. Now, a detachment of Philistines had gone out to the pass at Michmash. 1 Samuel 14, 1-23 One day, Jonathan, son of Saul, said to his young armor-bearer, Come, let's go over to the Philistine outpost on the other side. But he did not tell his father. Saul was staying on the outskirts of Gibeah, under a pomegranate tree in Migron. With him were about 600 men, among whom was Ahijah, who was wearing an ephod. He was a son of Ichabod's brother, Ahitob, son of Phinehas, the son of Eli, the Lord's priest in Shiloh. No one was aware that Jonathan had left. On each side of the pass that Jonathan intended to cross to reach the Philistine outpost was a cliff. One was called Bozes and the other Sene. One cliff stood to the north toward Michmash, the other to the south toward Gebar. Jonathan said to his young armor Come, let's go over to the outpost of those uncircumcised men. Perhaps the Lord will act in our behalf. Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. Do all that you have in mind, his armor said. Go ahead, I am with you, heart and soul. Jonathan said, Come on them. We will cross over toward them and let them see us. If they say to us, Wait there until we come to you, we will stay where we are and not go up to them. But if they say, Come up to us, we will climb up because that will be our sign that the Lord has given them into our hands. So both of them showed themselves to the Philistine outpost. Look, said the Philistines, the Hebrews are crawling out of the holes they <coughs> were hiding in. The men of the outpost shouted to Jonathan and his armor bearer, Come up to us and we will teach you a lesson. So Jonathan said to his armor bearer, Climb up after me, the Lord has given them into the hand of Israel. Jonathan climbed up using his hands and feet with his armor bearer right behind him. The Philistines fell before Jonathan and his armor bearer followed and killed bef- behind him. In that first attack, Jonathan and his armor bearer killed some 20 men in an area of about half an acre. Israel routs the Philistines. Then panic struck the whole army, those in the camp and field and those in the outpost and raiding parties and the ground shook. It was a panic sent by God. Saul's lookout at Gibeah in Benjamin 
saw the army melting away in all directions. Then Saul said to the men who were with him, Most are the forces, and see who has left us. When they did, it was Jonathan and his armor bearer who were not there. Saul said to Ahijah, Bring the ark of God. At that time, it was with the Israelites. While Saul was talking to the priest, the tumult in the Philistine camp increased more and more. So Saul said to the priest, Withdraw your hand. Then Saul and all his men assembled and went to the battle. They found the Philistines in total confusion, striking each other with, a, with their swords. Those Hebrews who had previously been with the Philistines and had gone up with them to their camp went over to the Israelites who were with Saul and Jonathan. When all the Israelites who had hidden in the hill country of Ephraim heard that the Philistines were on the run, they joined the battle in hot pursuit. So on that day, the Lord saved Israel and the battle moved on beyond Beth Aven. New Testament NIV Version John 13, 18-28 Jesus predicts his betrayal. I am not referring to all of you. I know those I have chosen. But this is to fulfill this passage of scripture. He who shared my bread has turned against me. I am telling you now before it happens so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am who I am. Very truly, I tell you, whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me. And whoever accepts me accepts the one who sent me. After he has said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified. Very truly, I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, the disciples whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to his to this disciple and said, Ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is a one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then, dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. So Jesus told him, What, are you, what you are about to do, do quickly. But no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas had charged of the money some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the festival or to give something to the poor as soon as Judas had taken the bread he went out and it was night Jesus predicts Peter's denial when he was gone Jesus said now the son of man is glorified and God is glorified in him if God is glorified in him God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now where I am going, I, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, Where I am going, you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Then Jesus answered, Will you really lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 66, verse 13 to 20. I will come to your temple with burnt offerings and fulfill my vows to you. Vows my lips promised and my mouth spoke when I was in trouble. I will sacrifice fat animals to you and an offering of rams. I will offer bulls and goats. <clears throat> come and hear or you will fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him. With my mouth, his praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and has heard my prayer. Praise be to God 
who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. Amen. Lessons learned from 1 Samuel 13 in this chapter. Saul makes an unlawful sacrifice, thinking he needs to appease God before battle due to Samuel's delay and the people's fear. Lessons learned include the importance of obedience over sacrifice. Saul's impatience leads to his disobedience of divine instructions, teaching us that obedience to God's commands is more critical than ritualistic acts. Consequences of impulsive decisions. Saul's decision, driven by pressure and fear, results in the kingdom being taken away from him, highlighting the long-term consequences of failing to trust and wait on God's timing. Lessons learned from 1 Samuel 14, 1 to 23. Jonathan, son, Saul's son, trusting in God's ability to save, initiates an attack on the Philistine outpost with his armor bearer, resulting in a miraculous victory. Lessons learned from this part include faith and initiative in God's service. Jonathan's initiative, based on faith in God's power, teaches that God can work through our bold actions when they are guided by faith. God's sovereignty in delivery, victory. The victory achieved with minimal human resources highlights that success in God's missions depends more on his power than on our strength or numbers. Lessons learned from John 13, 18 to 38. This passage includes Jesus predicting his betrayal by Judas, his commandment to love one another, and the prediction of Peter's denial. Lessons learned here include foreknowledge and sovereignty of Jesus. Jesus demonstrates his divine knowledge of future events, including the betrayal and Peter's denial, affirming his control over all situations. New Commandment of Love Jesus instructs his disciples to love one another as he has loved them, setting a new standard for love that is self-sacrificial and unconditional. Human weakness and the need for vigilance. Peter's confident declaration that he will never deny Jesus, followed by Jesus' prediction of his denial, teaches the need for humility and vigilance in our spiritual commitments. Lessons learned from Psalm 66, verse 13 to 20. This segment of Psalm 66 is a personal testimony of the psalmist where he praises God for listening to his prayers and not ignoring his supplication. Lessons learned include power of prayer and God's responsiveness. The psalmist emphasizes that God indeed listens to and answers prayers, encouraging us to maintain a robust prayer life. Gratitude and Testimony By sharing how God has been faithful in answering prayers, the psalmist teaches the importance of giving thanks and testifying to God's goodness and faithfulness. Integrity in Worship The psalmist points out that if he had cherished sin in his heart, the Lord would not have listened, stressing the importance of approaching God with a pure heart. These passages collectively provide profound insights into faith the importance of obedience, the power of God's intervention, and the necessity of love and integrity in our spiritual lives. Faith declarations from 1 Samuel 13 and 1 Samuel 14, 1 to 23. I declare that I will wait on the Lord's timing and direction, trusting his plans over my fears or the pressures of the world. I confess that obedience to God's commands is paramount and I will prioritize his will above all else. I confess that with God, small numbers or limited resources are no barrier to success. Like Jonathan, I believe that God can work through me to achieve great victories. I commit to taking bold steps of faith, trusting that God is with me to deliver and empower me. Faith declarations from John 13, 18 to 38. I acknowledge Jesus' sovereignty and his knowledge of all things, including my own heart and future actions. I embrace his commandment to love one another as he has loved me, committing to live out this love in self-sacrificial, tangible ways in my relationships.
I recognize my own vulnerabilities and the potential for feeling in my spiritual commitments. I declare that I will rely on Jesus' strength and not my own, seeking to remain vigilant and humble, acknowledging my dependence on His grace. Faith Declarations from Psalm 66 verse 13 to 20 I praise God for His attentive ear and His powerful acts in response to my prayers. I am committed to keeping my heart pure and free from sin when I approach Him knowing that integrity in my relationship with God is crucial for a vibrant prayer life. I will share the testimonies of His goodness and faithfulness encouraging others with the stories of his responses to my prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, if you are blessed by the scriptures and you would like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me, believing in your heart every single word you say. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations if you said this prayer. We are so excited to welcome you to God's family. Can you go ahead right now? Send us an email. Let us know you gave your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new walk of faith. The email address is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. That is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. God bless you. Please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Areleba. Thank you so much for being here again today. It's always a blessing having you here. I look forward to another amazing day with you tomorrow. Have a blessed day today. I love you. Bye.